William Kumembe, welcoming you to the Codron here on Times TV. This is the program in which we bring top news editors from various newsrooms in the countries to discuss, number one, topical issues in the country, issues that have happened within this particular week and are uh, topical. And also we go international to discuss topical international issues, issues that are making the news, that, that are making the headlines on the international arena, as well as the newsroom segment where we discuss issues that are related to how we daily conduct our business as journalists. And my guest today is one Mbawo Javula. Mbawo is news editor at the Blunt Synod Radio. Welcome to the program, Mbawo. Thank you. Uh, it's been three weeks, I, I assume, uh, yeah. without, <laughs> without having you in the program. Um, how do we start? How do we start? Should we start by talking about the U.S. politics? No, we won't. It's we not won't on talk script. About that. <laughs> it's not on the script. Let's start with local issues. What potatoes of fuel contract reforms report? That's uh, one of the critical things that we we uh, we want to talk about today. After seeing that Mira has not given the note to Nokma unconditionally, that is, uh, the, the Parliamentary Committee on Natural Resources has ordered Nokma uh, to proceed to out fuel uh, importation contract, despite strong opposition from Mira, something that the Attorney General has described as illegal and unprocedural. On the other hand, human rights groups uh, continue this week uh, to ask government to make public, uh, you know about that that uh, private sector reform report which Vice President Salos Chilima presented to President Lazarus Chavira after the program, uh, uh, I mean after the, 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 the report was, submis was submitted to the President. We start the fuel issue. Uh, why have, uh, why are there differences on the fuel contract uh, between Nokma, Mera, and uh, the, the, the parliamentary committee in this context. When you look at uh, it critically, it's all a question of, about egos, I believe. Egos. And, and you know that uh, with uh, NOKMA, I think there was also controversy over the person who is heading it right now, the, mm -hmm. the deputy head of that place. Mm -hmm. There were so many issues about her. So maybe people are now trying to flex and show that maybe she's no longer on the winning side or something like that. Mm -hmm. But really, it's through, it looks so personal when you look at it critically, mm -hmm. though it's affecting all of us as a nation. Though it's affecting all of us as a nation, this is a strategic uh, commodity, which makes the matter uh, strategic as well. What does it portray? It, it shows the lack of patriotism, because uh, the whole country will be held to ransom because mm -hmm. of... Uh, the posturing of a few individuals. You look at the fact that the whole economy is dependent on fuel. Mm -hmm. If the fuel doesn't come, everything will grind to a halt. We're already in serious trouble with uh, the prices of goods going off the roof. And if there's a fuel shortage, you can be sure that it will create even more problems and even more price rises. So where does that leave me as a, an ordinary Malawian? Mm -hmm. do, do the players, uh, the stakeholders, uh, recall what we went through as a country in 2012? And that none of us would want to get back to that scenario anymore. To to, to say that uh, they don't recall would be I, I don't even know. Uh, I, everyone remembers. Everyone was an adult remembers that time where we were spending maybe five hours at a filling station just trying to get a few liters of fuel. So to to get back to that nightmare scenario, I think it is uncalled for, especially if there is a solution for that. And that solution lies in dialogue mm -hmm. and somebody just uh, relenting and saying fine maybe we'll back down let us proceed for the sake of the nation mm -hmm. I'll, I'll ask you what needs to be done a little later in the program but let me bring to your attention or let me bring into the equation the consumer uh, is the consumer considered in all this fight actually the consumer is the one who should be considered is he or she considered I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. As I said, it's a question of flexing who is, who's who got more power, who hasn't the power now. But the fact is, everyone, even those who are doing that, will also be affected mm -hmm. unless they've got fewer tanks in their homes. But every Malawian sooner or later will be affected by that. Well, what should have been done by the consumer uh, to at least have their voice heard? There's only so much that an ordinary person can do. 
I, I believe that uh, the people who are entrusted to be in the position of boards in this particular organization, mm -hmm. they, they should hold the interest of the Malawians at heart. Mm -hmm. It is not a question of sometimes you just stick to what you feel is right in terms of procedure maybe. When you know that uh, if you actually are a bit more flexible, it will be for the greater good. So sometimes you look at the greater good instead of focusing on maybe legalese. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. But if you are contracting, uh, let me assume for once, it's not as controversial as being portrayed, is it? I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been part of the system, but from what we've been reading, mm -hmm. No, I think it's made its position very clear. There will be fewer shortages if the contracts are not given out. Mm -hmm. the, the, the board of Mera has its own side of the story. But the question is, at the end of the day, how will it affect you and I as Malawians? Mm -hmm. That should be the primary consideration from both sides, regardless of who gets the contract mm -hmm. or how they got it. Let us fight over that, but ensure that at least there is enough fuel supply in the country. As you are saying, uh, each of the entities uh, has made or have made uh, their position clear. Uh, Mera Board has made its position clear. Nokma uh, made its position clear. Now they're coming the, the parliamentary committee. Before we bring the parliamentary committee in, 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 in the equation, who should we believe? <laughs> <laughs> All of them seem to be standing on on, on high ground. Mm -hmm. So, but I believe that Nokma, Nokma, I think it's the one which contracts. Mm -hmm. So they they know what they're doing. And when they're saying there'll be shortages, they know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. The parliamentary committee is coming in as the voice of reason. Fine, the AG says that they they have stretched their mandate, but sometimes reason has to prevail. So when they see that others are, other players are now coming in who are not mandated and they are giving orders, then you should know that something is seriously wrong. But Mera as a regulator has come in to say, wait a minute, this is costly. It is costly, but w what w won't it be more costly if we have no fuel in the country? Mm -hmm. Imagine, rem remember those days, as we said, sleeping at the filling stations. Why should we do that when there's a solution? Let's talk about the uh, Parliamentary Committee on, on, on Energy. Uh, we all know uh, Mera is the regulator, but the, 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 the Parliamentary Committee has come in to have its voice. Uh, what do you make of the interventions made by the committee? That's exactly what I was saying, that it's a question of the voice of reason coming in. Mm -hmm. Because they, I think they're in a better position to know the implications because they understand the nitty gritties of even the, the contracting and stuff. So when they're coming in to give orders and ultimatums, they know the gravity of the situation at hand. Mm -hmm. They just had to come in. Maybe they will be disregarded. What they've said would not be taken because as the AG said, it is not within their mandate. But at least people will now sit and uh, listen to say, let us resolve this. Mm -hmm. Did the committee, in your view, uh, act as impartial as it's supposed to? The, on this time, I believe they're on the side of Malawians. Mm -hmm. It's not a question of impartiality. They're doing their job as they're supposed to with their oversight role in Parliament and also ensuring that there is enough energy in the country. Where, where should we go from this, Bawo? Uh, because two weeks now, we're revolving around the same circles. Where should we go from this moving forward? Somebody actually said that the boards should be dissolved <laughs> and maybe bring in people who are more amenable to reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe that could be a solution. Mm -hmm. Find people who are willing to, to, to have a common ground. Is it as easy to have a common ground? It's a question of one side backing down mm -hmm. for the greater good, as I said. So when, when they actually start reasoning critically now, mm -hmm. they'll realize that the greater good is what matters most. Mm -hmm. Some circles are saying the committee uh, is bulldozing the process. Do it's not. They have seen, and they, as I said, they know the implications. Mm -hmm. They are not bulldozing. They are just trying to safeguard things before they get out of hand. Mm -hmm. is, is fuel a lucrative business? It is. The world over, people are fighting wars because of fuel. Mm -hmm. And we are just uh, like a consumer here. But even where it's, it's gotten from, you know how it is. Wars have started because people have discovered petroleum in their buckets. They are fighting up to now. Mm -hmm in places where there's fewer, you know, the wars that are there. So it is a very lucrative business. Then would and the, the, the more expensive it is, the better. Would, 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 would the consumer on the pump station uh, be wrong to assume that all this fight is based on uh, how lucrative the business is? 
Yes, the, the, the highest bidder gets the contract or the, the bidder who gets the contract definitely gets a lot of money. We don't know what happens behind the scenes. I don't want to imply anything, but uh, some things make you wonder. Mm -hmm. To an extent, uh, all this borders also on haulage of fuel, uh, importation of fuel, movement of fuel from one end into the country. There's been suggestions to say, why can't we just put up a pipeline? From where to where? We don't have direct access mm -hmm. to any pipeline. The, the closest we have, I think it's in Cabo de where there's a serious war in Mozambique, there's a pipeline of fuel there. That we can't risk investing there. I don't believe anyone can invest. <laughs> Even the, the investors, they pulled out mm -hmm. when the war got serious. So where would we go with that? Mm -hmm. At the moment, we're still stuck unless we find our own reserves. We, we, we heard of reserves on Lake Malawi. The issue just died silently. I don't know where we are now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Still on transportation of fuel, uh, how about use of railway versus uh, road network? There's been calls to say, why can't we revamp uh, the railway network, uh, which, which, as they suggest, would be a little cheaper uh, compared to, to the road network? William, we've been talking about this. <laughs> you know these things, on manifestos, we've got beautiful papers written about uh, the railway system in Malawi. Mm -hmm. What happens? Nobody seems to care. I, I wish I was sitting where you're sitting, that I could equally give my view on this, but uh, <laughs> I'm limited to posing questions to you. No, seriously. We've, people have talked about the railway stations, talking about electric lines going to Malawi and you know so many things, but they're just pipe dreams. Mm -hmm. Unless some, some day we seriously reconsider things as a nation, we'll just keep on talking and then time will go by. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, it will be 2040 or 2063 and what will you have achieved by then? Mm. So we are, we are a country full of wish list, are we? We are. Why? I mean, very beautiful wishes, actually. Why? But what materializes? Where, where do we miss it as a country? We miss it because of now issues like like the ego part. Mm -hmm. With uh, there are some people who just lack patriotism. Mm -hmm. They will do anything they can to sabotage their country so long as their pockets are lined. And we've got a lot of such people in high positions. How do we um, find out on this one, Bowo? Uh, completely and entirely address the issues to do with fights over such moves in the country. It's not the first one. We've had similar fights over and over again. I remember the 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 the, the fifty fifty kind of importation deal. We we fought over it. I think for about three four years uh, until the the parliamentary committee also was involved in it. How can we put a remedy to such uh, differences? It's it's acceptable to have differences in opinion. I agree, it but is. but where differences in opinion uh, is hindering progress, we still have to f have a, f a solution. That that is why we we elect a president. He has the final say. He can decide to dissolve any board any time he wants. Would you rather the president intervenes and make an executive directive or order in this scenario? The problem is he could make an order, but then, you know, people rush into courts nowadays and stuff like that. But at least he should make his stance clear. Because everyone who is in any position was appointed by him. So ultimately they answer to him. Mm -hmm. And he's got the final say. Whatever his side is, he has to make it clear that mm -hmm. this is what I want and this is for the good of the nation. He's told us so many times he's a servant leader. Mm -hmm. And what he does should serve Malawians. So... If he sees that whatever is happening is to the detriment of you and I, definitely he has to intervene. Last but not least, Mbawo, uh, hypothetically, assuming all things remain equal, what is the foreseen future like? I, I do not see the fuel shortages coming in. I see some sort of deal being brokered. It may be a temporary one, mm -hmm. but the fuel will keep on coming. Needless to be scared. I don't think so. <laughs> you know, Malawians nowadays, they, they are very woke. I mm -hmm. don't think they will allow anyone to, to really sabotage their life mm -hmm. the way some people used to do in the past with impunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's needless, according to Mbawo, to be scared. This is the quadrant where editors meet. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. My name is William Kumwembe and this is The Codron on Times Television. The Codron is a program where top editors meet. We gather uh, top newsroom editors weekly to discuss topical issues that are happening in the country. And in the very first portion of the first segment, we're discussing about uh, the uh, fuel importation deals that uh, have been discussed in the recent past in the country. We've seen uh, the Parliamentary Committee uh, on, on, on Natural Resources uh, intervening in such uh, differences. Moving on, uh, this week, Mbawo, uh, the, the, the State House said it cut, uh, clearly and categorically said uh, the report which uh, Vice President Salo Shirima submitted to the President would not be uh, brought to the attention of the public. Firstly, uh, let me drag you a little bit. What do you make of the process, uh, faces involved in crafting the, the, the report itself? There were very eminent Malawians led mm -hmm. by our Vice President. Mm -hmm. There are people of repute in society. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if the State House says that the report will not be made public, but I'm sure you've seen it, because I've seen the report myself. Have I don't you? know whether it was leaked. Yeah, I've seen oh. it. Maybe there are excerpts, but I've seen mm -hmm. the gist of it. Mm -hmm. Everyone is sharing on WhatsApp. So when they say it won't be made public, I don't know what that if, means. If what you've seen is what I've seen, yeah, I would still ask before I proceed to the to the areas that we want to discuss. Is it as authentic? It should be. <laughs> Why should it did be? We've seen so many leakages from the high offices. Mm -hmm. well, what's the difference with this one? Mm -hmm. We have seen the gist of what uh, the vice president and the committee discussed. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what is so controversial about it. Mm -hmm. Some of the things, of course, they are very lofty. When you, the ideas, when you think about it, to see them being worked out and actually coming out in Malawi. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a, a dream. The State House says the President will first study uh, the report and his decisions are what will be made public. Does it make sense? <laughs> Obviously it, it does make sense to the one who's saying it. They have their own reasons for saying that. Mm -hmm. And it is true that the President must study the report because he cannot just peruse through and then decide on what to do. Mm -hmm. There could be, say, uh, I'm sure when he was given the report, it wasn't that immediately implemented. Mm -hmm. He will read it and then he will decide what he likes or doesn't like out of it. Maybe ask a few questions, clarity on some of the issues raised, mm -hmm. and then maybe it will go back and be refined before they can make it public. Mm -hmm. But to say that it will not be made public forever, it, it, that is what doesn't make sense. Uh, there is an exciting part from the State House uh, Communications Department where they say the President received so many uh, recommendations. And I would, I would still align to the earlier questions I posed to you. Uh, but decisions are his uh, to make. Is mm. that correct? <laughs> it's what I was saying right here that he, he cannot just be, it will not be imposed on him. Mm -hmm. He ordered, he commissioned the report. Mm -hmm. He has to look at it. And if he doesn't like parts of it, maybe he will seek clarity, or maybe he will say, remove this bit. So maybe it is a bit, bit premature for us to say that. Uh, let him show it to us. Let him give it to us. He hasn't studied it, yes. Mm -hmm. But we don't know what will happen after he studies it. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. A benefit of the doubt. How does uh, all this sit with the democratic ideals of transparency and accountability? William, sometimes we just have to accept that uh, a lot all of us can't be governing at the same time. If the president <laughs> were to listen to each and every voice, then he would be a very confused person. At the end of the day, he's his own man. He has to make his own decisions. Mm -hmm. You and I have different opinions on so many things. He has his own opinions as a person. There are 18 million of us in this country. All of us, we want him to do exactly what we like as individuals. How does one operate in such an environment? At the end of the day, he's his own person. Let him make up his own mind what he wants to do. Of course, within the reason that this is for the greater good. Mm -hmm. But it's, it doesn't make sense that he has to listen. Somebody says this today, tomorrow he will. <laughs> it, it doesn't work like that. We, we are operating in an era where, in fact, uh, advisors are all over in terms of uh, social media. Mm -hmm. And this, there's been uh, pressure on this, on this particular issue. You say we are in, in, in a moment whereby not everything that would be said would be incorporated. But I'll still stick to issues of transparency and accountability. Uh, 
does it auger well with the principles of transparency and accountability? And I will still stick to my point to say that give him space to study it mm -hmm. and make his decisions. Mm -hmm. There's this unnecessary pressure that we put on people sometimes. It's exactly what I'm saying. If you go by the pressure of, uh, you know, on Facebook, there are so many activists. <laughs> Everyone is an activist. Everyone is an expert on something. Mm -hmm. And they want the president to do exactly what they like without giving him a chance to, to do his job. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different voices, pro and against. If, if you were really to go by what social media says, I believe, I, I'm telling you, even you as an individual, you would not make any decisions in your own house <laughs> because of the pressure that people put on. Mm -hmm. You just put, post a photo there, and there will be so many different opinions, and then you wonder, who am I really? They can even make you question who you are. So let the president be, for, for the time being. Mm -hmm. Let him study that report, and then he'll make his recommendations. Are Malawians in the wrong to desperately desire to see the report? I'm sure the desire that you and I had to see it is the same desire that the president had. Because when they were coming up with that final report, I, I don't think he was privy to each and every little thing. Mm -hmm. They polished it up and then they've given it to him. Let him study it. I would what is so difficult about that? <laughs> Let him start it. Before I pose the last question, Bawo, I would be a little hypothetical. Assuming you were part of the panel uh, that uh, crafted the report, one of the key things is civil service reforms. What would you want uh, changed in the in the civil service? <laughs> 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 I have let's, never, let's, let's be a little hypothetical. Moment. I've never worked in the mainstream civil service. Mm -hmm. I've worked for a parastato. I know how it operates. But what, what, what I can say is uh, if they give the people decent salaries, mm -hmm. many of the problems that we have would not be there. Mm -hmm. So first thing, or oh, the thing that you'd rather recommend is decent salaries? Yes. And then many so the much problems. stems from, from the little money that people get. Mm -hmm. The corruption and the delays, you, you know, that attitude where somebody doesn't want to help you when they're in an office. Maybe they've got so many problems at mm -hmm. home, and most of the problems we have stem from lack of finances. Mm -hmm. So if they address that issue of salaries, if indeed what I saw, that leaked report, <laughs> go by, maybe it would go a long way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I would still pose uh, this one, uh, which is in correlation to the previous question. Uh, what could be quick gains uh, for implementing uh, dictates or provisions or advices that have been uh, crafted in the report? I, I would not want to preempt. It's not my report. It is the president's <laughs> report. So I believe that he will come out and tell us mm -hmm. after he has read it. You know, even when you go for interviews, you don't just come back the same day and expect results unless it is a very urgent matter. Mm -hmm. You sometimes wait even a month before you're given the results of what you went for. So let us be a little patient. Maybe if he takes another six months without giving us a response, that's uh, when we should start worrying now. Mm -hmm. Give him time. Of the things that, on a lighter note, of the things that you have seen, what could have been avoided? <laughs> <laughs> Let me not comment on that. <laughs> she says she would not comment on that. We'll be right back when she's ready to comment on an international story. That's uh, where we are in the program, The Codron, where editors meet. My name is William Kumwembe, and I'm joined in the studios by Mbawo Chafura. Mbawo is uh, Blanta News, uh, rather Blanta Synod Radio uh, News Editor. We have been discussing local issues. We closed the first segment on a rather lighter note, uh, which opted not to comment on. Uh, I'm not taking on you. <laughs> <laughs> I, will not, I will not bring that issue again uh, to your attention, Bao. Going international, religion versus uh, medicine again. Doctors in India have hit out against yoga guru Baba. Oh, how do we pronounce this word, by the way? Okay, let's just use the word Baba. Uh -huh. uh, over his controversial sentiments against modern medicine. He recently said that tens of thousands died of COVID after taking modern medicine and mocked patients for trying to get oxygen cylinders. Uh, 
He withdrew his statement after the health minister criticized him, but once again, a clash between religion and modern medicine at the height of COVID pandemic. Bow. I would not necessarily call yoga a religion. I would say it's a, it's a practice. And uh, the person who practices yoga is in a very different level from a person who just wakes up. Mm -hmm. Because the people who practice yoga, they, they meditate a lot. Mm -hmm. their, their bodies are disciplined in ways that uh, some of us who are just ordinary people don't discipline ourselves. Mm -hmm. Their minds are more disciplined. So for, for him, maybe the sickness is something to laugh at because it's going beyond a certain point. You know, in yoga, they reach a point where they call it nirvana, mm -hmm. where they've reached the ultimate. You've done yoga? In the mind. I do sometimes. Wow. <laughs> I've done so many things. I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> so this person, he's speaking on a very different level from you and I. Mm -hmm. So what, what would be laughable to him, it's something I would struggle with as a human being because their main thing is achieving peace, mm -hmm. achieving nirvana where you, you, you reach God in your mind, something like that. Mm -hmm. So for him, maybe he's in a godlike state so he doesn't understand what we are still striving about as mere humans who are just trying to, to, to live. So we are, we are operating in different wave, wavelengths, so to speak. Yeah, it, it's a very different dimension because their, their mindset is very different from the mindset of an ordinary human being. You and I have so many fears, but somebody who practices yoga and meditates, mm -hmm. they, they, they gradually go through the barriers, they remove the barriers in the mind mm -hmm. until they reach a point where they fear nothing. But but there are vaccines now which seem to be working. It's all, all about mindset as well. If, you, if you're so fearful and you get the vaccine and mm -hmm. you fear that the vaccine will kill you, it will definitely kill you. Mm -hmm. So it's all about the mindset. So maybe this man underestimated the, the, the hate that would come against him because of the many people who are dying. Because India, 300,000 have died. Could, could, could he influence others that had the interest, the desire, to go for a uh, vaccine or medical treatment? I don't believe he would do that because it is in a state of panic. Mm -hmm. The people are dying and it's not just the, the corona now. I understand there's a black fungus which has come as a result of that. So I don't believe somebody can tell me, don't put on an oxygen cylinder, I'd rather sit here and meditate until you get <laughs> <laughs> It wouldn't make any why, sense. Why are you laughing, Bill? Yeah, that, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It requires a whole totally different mindset. And some of those who practice meditation and yoga, they've been doing it since they are young. Mm -hmm. You know, in India, they also have their monasteries and the Buddhist temples and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So they take a young boy, maybe of 10, they're there with the gurus and they're meditating until he's a grown man. Mm -hmm. So that child has grown up with a totally different mindset mm -hmm. from somebody who just grew up in the city as a normal child. Mm -hmm. well, and would be much calmer in a, in a place where you should panic than somebody who is just normal. Talking of the vaccine, uh, we, we get back to COVID. I think we discussed uh, about COVID way, way back. Uh, I remember when we had all our view, views uh, talking of Tanzania and everything yeah. else. Uh, talking of the vaccine, there is evidence that all of them that are on the market as we speak uh, now are effective even against the Indian variant, uh, which is an encouraging uh, issue uh, to the world. But uptake of, of, of the vaccine in the country seems to be minimal. And we actually had to destroy some. Oh, expired some, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very unfortunate. That I, I think I've alluded to this before that mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it also, it also comes together with what you're talking about this guru now, that mm -hmm. uh, religion, it plays a very big role. Religion and propaganda now. Mm -hmm. And we'll still go back to the social media. So much fear has been spread on social media and even some radio stations and TV stations as well, mm -hmm. where the vaccine is, is seen as a sort of a monster. Mm -hmm. From the West, it says that they, they will alter your DNA, you'll be like something else. <laughs> They're saying they, they'll put a microchip in you, you'll be monitored forever. Here we talk of 666. You know, all those things, they do influence people. Mm -hmm. It might not be so obvious but insidiously you listen to these things each and every day it seeps into the back of your mind and then you say no not take that vaccine mm -hmm. but in malawi did we hear of anyone dying because they had had the vaccine we didn't even hear of a single case of somebody having the clothes mm -hmm. unless it was hidden but i don't think so then what what's really our problem uh, because if you talk of where we reached a point of destroying some that means we didn't go in numbers expected 
That is why I was saying that if, if you go by what social media says, you will not even make a single decision as an individual, even in your own home. Mm. Because you are bombarded by so much information and misinformation from all sides, with everyone claiming to be an expert. Some claim to be an expert in religion, some claim to be experts in science, some claim to be experts in herbs. So you, you don't know what to do. And if you've got a very weak mind, I can assure you, you have a very tough time in this life. But what do we need to do as a country, uh, precisely on, on, on issues of vaccine? Because across the globe, we cannot uh, precisely, the developed world, people, people's uptake of the vaccine is slightly higher than this part of the world. It is. And you know, in so many states in the U.S. now, life is back to normal. They're not mm -hmm. even wearing masks, masks, so long as you're fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Don't we want to go back to that kind of life? If we, if we, if we maybe we use the social media in a positive manner, that you don't actually actively search for the negatives, or the why not try searching for the positives, because that's what we do. You know, we we are programmed that way. Somebody says people are dying, and then you automatically be searching for the numbers who have died because mm -hmm. of this vaccine, the numbers affected, instead of actually looking at the positive side, because even those numbers are very negligible. Uh, I will not ask if you have gotten the job. It's not for public attention. No, it's fine. I did. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, what do you make of the myths surrounding uh, the vaccination? I would say that uh, those of us who actually took the vaccine are also to blame to a certain extent. Because we, we, you know, we all got a, we, we all put on Facebook that <laughs> we're getting my job. Yeah, and then we're also documenting our, our symptoms after mm. the reactions after. Mm. I had so say I had fever. Yeah. So everybody, imagine hundred people saying that you know I had a fever, I couldn't eat, I was down for two weeks, things like that. They mm. also influence the decisions of others not to go for the vaccine. Uh, are we are we blaming entire Facebook? Because we're talking of a population in some parts of the country that do not at all have access to social media no but they have access to to religious leaders also. traditional leaders radio stations so you find a phone in program three quarters of the people are phoning in to condemn that mm. vaccine you go to church and the, the pastor decides that uh, he will talk about the 666 and the last days <laughs> things like that they influence people way forward way forward at the end of the day each and every person your, your life is your own mm -hmm. You have to decide. It's got nothing to do with me or, or your wife or your children. No, it's up to you to decide what kind of life you want to have, the quality of life you want for it. All of us had our, had our own reasons for taking the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Others just felt they should. Some know that they will travel sooner or later and they know that it, it will soon be impossible to, to travel internationally <laughs> if you don't have that passport. So it was a question of being pragmatic now. Do I take it or not? I like, is the I like the last the last reason that you've given to say someone feels mm -mm, there might be an international yeah <laughs> Malawians and trips you know what yeah, i'm talking course. about journalists like <laughs> <laughs> come on we'll talk about journalists a little later <laughs> in the program and then you say if i don't get a job uh, my fear is i'll miss a trip is it a healthy issue indeed it must be <laughs> <laughs> For most of our decisions in life are very selfish decisions when you look at it. It's got nothing to do with health, it's got nothing to do with the neighbor, it's got nothing to do with protecting the populace. It's up to you now mm -hmm. as an individual, how will it benefit me? Mm -hmm. Back to the uh, Indian yoga guru, and we'll end on that note, this segment. Uh, one, one thing that uh, he said was, uh, I quote verbatim, God has given us free oxygen. Why don't we breathe that? How can there be a shortage of oxygen when God has filled the atmosphere with oxygen? Fools, they use the word fools. Fools are looking for oxygen cylinders. Just breathe the free oxygen. Why are you complaining about shortage of oxygen and beds and uh, all that, whatever they call it? Why are you complaining about that? <laughs> As I said, yoga is, is, is a meditation practice where breathing is very key. They are taught the levels of breathing until they achieve that state of of bliss. Mm -hmm. So he is talking from a very different level. I will still say that he understands how to breathe and he, you use the body in totally different ways, many different ways to his benefit. Mm -hmm. But what about those who haven't had the benefit of that practice? It's a bit safe or not to be operating in a different level. Each to their own. Each to their own. Yeah. 
Let's have a break. <laughs> okay. Each to their own. This is the quadron where editors meet. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and this is the last mile of uh, the marathon, the last segment of the program where we discuss uh, issues that have a bearing in as far as storytelling, news reporting is concerned. It's called the newsroom segment. And the question is, how do we, uh, referring to journalists, treat controversial reports? I'm joined by Mbawo. Shavula Mbawo is uh, a news editor at the Blanta Synod Radio. Mbawo, I'll get you a little back to uh, where we started in the first segment, but you made mention to say journalists and love for trips. I said, no, 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 hold that. We'll have a segment specifically where you can ably analyze the newsroom and its, its, its people. This week, the State House said categorically clear that the report on reforms which Vice President Salos Chirima will not be made public, but the President, that is Lazarus Chagwera, will study it and his decisions are what will be made public. How should the media behave when such decisions are made to advance accountability and transparency? You know, we operate in a very thin line between investigative journalism and uh, sometimes you go beyond and you actually become a criminal in your search for for information. In your desire to just yes. tell the maybe story. Maybe to have a scoop, maybe to be the best. So that thin line, we have to tread it very carefully because uh -huh. uh, despite the access to information acts being there, democracy being there, uh -huh. but uh, there are some parameters beyond which you cannot cross. Okay. Despite uh, whatever I feel about something, the president's office is, uh, is sacrosanct. It's his office. It's a protected office. Mm -hmm. He has the right to make his decisions as president. You and I elected him to that position so that he can rule over this country. He can lead, rather. So if uh, I'll still say that, let him study that report. Sooner or later, he will have to make the decisions. And it's not a question of whether he likes it or not. It's a question of he mandated that report. He has his duty bound to come back to us and tell us about his decisions. Mm -hmm. He's not just going to sit on it, especially with the, you talking about it every day. So much pressure from the pressure groups like the NGOs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He will come out with a statement. This afternoon, the president is going into parliament. Maybe that issue will come out as well. Mm -hmm. So give it time. But it's not a question of, even if I write, I mean, the report you and I saw, it's leaked. We don't mm -hmm. know the authenticity. So you can be busy writing about that thing when you, it's very different from what is real, mm -hmm. what was given to the president. Because this, is a, this was a, a committee. I'm sure they were thrown into secrecy when they were getting into that committee. Mm -hmm. If it's leaked, maybe it's from some of them. But what if it didn't? What if what we saw was just a, a decoy? Mm -hmm. So uh, I would rather wait. As I write something that I don't know anything about. Talking of leaks, is getting the report out by way of leaks uh, piling pressure on the presidency? It, it really doesn't help anyone. It does not help anyone. Because we've seen now uh, attacks on the committee and the vice president, mm -hmm. even on his person as, as an individual now, because of what is in that purported report. Mm -hmm. We do not know what drove them to come to the conclusion that they did. To, to actually write down what they wrote in that report. Mm -hmm. this, uh, this is a group of eminent Malawians, very well-educated individuals, very experienced individuals, both in life and in whatever spheres of life that they work in. So when they were writing that report, they had their own reasons, very genuine reasons, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. They cannot just wake up and say, we'll put this point here. For what reason? I'm sure there's a justification. Until we read the entire report, that's when we can actually criticize or maybe you comment. Uh -huh. How careful how journalists should be uh, when treating, in quotes, leaked documents? Not only this particular one. That's why I'm saying it's now up to you. There's a, that, that line between being investigative and being a criminal. Uh -huh. At the end of the day, you might libel somebody. Uh -huh. You might go to jail for something of being of, because of being overzealous. Are we aware of that? I, I believe those <laughs> of us who are actually trained, we know. Uh -huh. But those Facebook journalists who want to... to to be Mr. and Mrs. Know It All. Mm -hmm. They don't know and they don't care. They don't even bother to study the law on defamation and stuff like that. Even any law, actually, even our constitution. 
the penal code, they don't take the time. They just want to be the first to break the story. Mm -hmm. They want to be the first to criticize, the first to say, I said it first. But at the end of the day, it will not end well. Finally, our last but not least, Bawo, as far as journalism is concerned, uh, what is the way forward on the issue of the reforms report? I will wait. As I said, I will wait because, we, as I said, we have just seen the leaks. Mm -hmm. The president hasn't spoken about it yet. The VP hasn't spoken about it yet. He has done his part, he has presented the report. Mm -hmm. Until I see it in its entirety, I cannot comment beyond that, beyond what I have said. Thank you so much, Bao. Thank you. Bao Javula is a news editor at the Planter Synod Radio. My name is William Kumwembe. This was the Codron where editors meet. Till next week, when we bring you yet another edition of the program. On behalf of Juan Kondwani uh, Mohone, who is manning the uh, machine behind the camera and the entire production team, bye for now.